Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Those are faces I'm not used to seeing back at that table. <laughs> Thanks for your help, guys. A um, few announcements to start out this morning. Um, so I'm going, so I don't forget, I'm going to follow your um, your bulletin. Every once in a while, I try to put them in chronological order, and I immediately forget something. So we're going to start there. Um, I do have something that was handed to me this morning. Super Seniors is happening Thursday the 17th. Okay? That is this Thursday at Ann and Tony's in West Jeff. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good side or a bad side, but uh, I don't know if you've been to Ann and Tony's. It's great Italian food. I've been there, and uh, don't make it back, obviously, enough. Um, do you need a count or just show up? Do they need a count or just show up? Uh, call me if they can't come. If you cannot come, so I'm just telling you now I cannot come. <laughs> I wasn't invited. See, that's where this goes. <laughs> okay, so if you're interested in going, please contact someone. We'll make it happen. Uh, if you don't have a phone number, get with me. I'll hand it out to you. Um, that's going to be at noon. I'm not sure if I said that or not. Um, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. We're a week behind. Sorry, Pat. I dropped the ball now. <laughs> so, um, Let's show them our love and our appreciation for having them here. There's some uh, things here that, um, suggestions, things that that have worked in the past, things that people like. So take a look at that and uh, make sure you show them love, your love this month, especially. Uh, board meeting tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. So everyone is welcome to that. Um, I say that from time to time. And I, we've had a couple of people show up that weren't technically on the board. But anyone is welcome. If you have any kind of questions or anything like that, feel free to join us um, at that. Baby shower, one week from today, 4 p.m. Okay. If you're interested in helping to provide food, come and talk to me, please, so that we can get that all worked out. So food donations, see Jen, please. We've got seven days until that comes up. Um, men's group, that's the 22nd. Um, that was a week from Tuesday. I've got my math right in my head. Uh, that will be here at the church. We're going to meet at the church this time, a little more conducive to our conversations and stuff. We've been to a couple of restaurants sometimes. It's hard to, to get to talk to everyone because of being a restaurant. So we're going to try it here this time. Let us know, like I said, so we can make sure we have enough food. I don't want any arm wrestling happening over some pizza. Um, prayer list. Uh, there's a little bit of a change in that. If you have any additions, subtractions, anything about the prayer list, please contact Kyle about that. We'll take care of that. Um, last but certainly not least, uh, Trump Retreat is coming um, October 27th. That is two weeks from today. Um, I've said this a couple times, just to remind everyone, last year we got overrun. It was like ants on an anthill. So uh, we hope to do it again. That sounds silly, but to see that many people coming through with smiles on their faces and getting the chance just to show our love to the community is a big deal. And I believe Jim had something she wants to say. I do. Um, even if you have not been able to attend a trunk or treat in the past and you won't be able to attend this year, this year we are collecting all the candy ahead of time. If you want to bring candy to the event, that's great. But we're collecting it all ahead of time. That way people who are giving out candy at their house already and they don't think they can provide much here, that's okay. We're putting all the candy together in one big thing and then we're going to divide it up and give to people to give out. That way you don't have to worry about running out before anybody else or you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, uh, I, I didn't decorate my trunk well enough. You can just show up with a chair and we'll give you a bag of candy and, and they'll be thrilled to see you. Okay, a bag of candy and a smile. If you can wear a costume, great. If you can decorate your trunk, great. If you can't do any of those things, I don't care, show up. It'll be awesome. Show up, serve, smile, help. We're going to need all kinds of help with uh, handing out food and just being there for people. So please keep bringing in candy. We're going to we're collecting it down in the basement, and please show up to that event. So, so we are growing a, um, a a viewing in the community as as that church down there that gives stuff away all the time. Um, for our car show, our Easter egg hunt, our trunk retreat, things that happen here at the church. Um, I have I went to Kent Ridge. I have a lot of old cohorts that still live in the area, and we are building somewhat of a reputation as being that church that loves on you whether or not you come there or not. So let's continue that because that's actually what it's all about. So with that, let's open a prayer. 
Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the time that we have to gather here and worship you. Be with us as we have these outreach community events and uh, personal events that we have within our men's group and our meetings and our, our lunches and our dinners and everything that we can uplift each other and we can show our love to the community and show your love through us to our community. Uh, be with us as we go through our day that we might be the shining light of the hill. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
singing one of my favorite hymns, and one that I especially appreciate around this time of year, around the fall. How great thou art. <laughs>
she was 100, which is, which is really cool that she really had her for that long, and it was a real blessing. Um, but her youngest son, Danny, my, my grandfather's um, younger brother, he's, he's never really lived, they live together, and he's never really lived without his mom around. Um, he's had, he has some complications um, after serving in Vietnam. He, he gets really distressed really easily. So this is going to be a real struggle for him. So if you could keep Danny Miller in your prayers as well as the rest of our family. Um, I feel like I should be more sad, but I know that she lived a really long, really happy life. And uh, she went fairly, she had a fall, um, which was bad. But after that, she, she went fairly peacefully in her sleep. So, um, so just prayers for my family as they, as they deal with that loss. Um, the last time I was here, um, or may have been a couple times before that, um, I mentioned a mail carrier uh, down in my office that was going into surgery. Well, was out of the office due to some so shoulder issues. Uh, her name was Kim. Um, well, more recently, they, she went to a second doctor because she felt like she was getting a run around from the first one. And uh, the second doctor immediately pointed out her problem and said, we need to get you into surgery as soon as possible. Um, However, as soon as possible, did mean October 30th. Um, so she's going to be out the entire Christmas season and part of next year. So just prayers that when uh, her surgery does happen, that everything goes through smoothly and she's back on her feet in no time. Anyone else this morning? Show of hands for unspoken. Keep going. Here's this. Um, a lot of our ushers come forward. We'll also take up the morning offering this one. If you're a guest here this morning, please don't feel obligated to give. This is just um, how the members of the church um, support uh, the missions we do here in North Hills. Let's bow together. <clears throat> Dear Lord, uh, we thank you so much um, for your. Uh, love and your mercy. We thank you uh, that we can bring all these requests to you, Lord. You're such an amazing God, um, so powerful, almighty, sovereign. Um, but you hear our, our requests, Lord. You take the time. Um, you already know what's going in our lives, but you still listen to us. Um, and I just think that's so amazing, Lord. I thank you for this community of believers um, that we can support each other in these prayer requests. Please help us know how to fill those needs of others, Lord. Um, please be with us um, through this service and through this week. Um, help us um, to really shine your light um, to the community around us. In Jesus' name I pray.
Well, good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you all uh, this fine morning. Uh, I had a pleasant surprise this morning. Uh, I found out that uh, one of the girls on our soccer team came to church. Her grandparents brought her to church, so I thank you for that. And I'm uh, glad we have an environment where they can learn in a fun, friendly environment at the junior church because uh, to you guys, I'm just this boring guy who talks to you guys for about a half hour. But believe it or not, those little girls actually think I'm pretty cool, and that would be, that would be a shame if, if I lost my cool factor with those little girls, so thank you, Junior Church. Uh, but it's good to see you all uh, this morning. Uh, this, uh, really, it's, it's a good day. Any, any day that God has made is a good day, a day that is worthy uh, to be praised. Uh, it was a cold day this morning as well. I uh, finally uh, had to get my scraper out this morning as I got here uh, at the church, and I had to do one of these numbers when I was driving, you know, where you just scrape the bottom part of it, and, you know, probably really not safe, but I had to do it regardless. Um, and then also next week, uh, our baby will be due in less than a month, um, and so that blows my mind. Uh, it hasn't really hit me yet that uh, my whole world is about to change in about a month. Um, and uh, I have to admit, though, so far, being a father is pretty easy. It's not too difficult so far. We'll see if that continues uh, when uh, Jamie gives birth to our baby. But it's definitely a baby. It's definitely human. 100% uh, human, just like uh, you and I. And that's just as much my baby as it is Jamie's baby, even though it's... Nestled in her womb. Oh no, it's as much mine. You better believe it. That that is my DNA in there. And so last week uh, we started a series on how uh, we receive eternal life. And last week uh, we we took a focus on grace. And we saw in Ephesians chapter two verse eight um, that we are saved by grace. I mean, Paul clearly states that. If you don't believe me, go go ahead there and look in Ephesians chapter two verse eight. For it says for. For we were saved by grace. It's by grace that each and every one of us have been saved. And uh, grace, again, is basically undeserved favor. It's when we receive something that we do not deserve. And, and, we, and we learn through reading through the book of Romans, um, that uh, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned. And we see just three chapters later, the same verse, Romans 6, 23, that the wages of that sin is death. And so each and every one of us, we deserve death, but only by the grace of God, that undeserved favor from God, something that we don't deserve, we may receive eternal life. And it's awesome because that gift of eternal life, it's free to us. It's free. Just like at Christmas time when, when you give presents to your kids or to your other family members, it's free to them. You pay it, but it's free to them. It's free to accept it. And God and Jesus paid, paid that penalty, that, that sacrifice. As God washed his beloved son, Jesus Christ, die on the cross for our sins, they paid that price. The price is already paid. And that gift of eternal life is free to each and every one of us because of God's grace. For we surely do not deserve eternal life. We, to be frank, we, we deserve death. Nothing more, nothing less. Nothing more, nothing less. But through the grace of God, we, we have a chance to receive eternal life, and it's free. It's free to each and every single one of us. Just like at Christmas time when you receive gifts, it's free to you. It costs, a person, it costs the person giving it to you something, but it's free to you. And just like that, eternal life, the free gift of God, is totally free to us. And, and again, I, I wish the narrative in there that, that we all receive eternal life and it's all free to us. But, but there's, there's a small catch here is when Christmas time rolls along and, and you're presented a free gift, you have two choices to make. One, you can either choose to say, yeah, you know what, no thanks, I don't want that gift. Or you can choose to accept and receive that gift. And similarly, that's a decision that each and every one of us needs to make as well. We, each and every one of us have been given that free gift of God, the free gift of eternal life. But each and every one of us here on earth needs to make the decision of whether or not we want to receive that free gift of eternal life. And, and, and we read through uh, reading the Gospels uh, and, and, and the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus actually informs us that most people are going to make the foolish, foolish decision not to receive, not to accept that free gift of eternal life. It's so foolish. I mean, I'm sure none of us have rejected a free gift come Christmas time. But for some odd reason, when we're presented the best gift in the world, 
the majority of the people choose to deny and, and reject that free gift of eternal life. And so we've all been uh, presented with that free gift of eternal life, but our focus these next two weeks is on how we receive that free gift of eternal life. We, we aren't saved by our own doing. No, it, it was all paid prior, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. It, it's by the grace of God and the grace of God alone that we are saved. However, we still need to make a decision to accept that free gift of eternal life. And again, that's what we're going to focus on these next two weeks. And today, uh, we're going to take a focus on faith, because faith uh, is really a huge, it, it's, it's the instrument, it, it's the center part of how we accept that free gift of eternal life. Now, last week, we also talked a bit about the differences between justice and mercy and grace. And today, uh, we're going to have to take a look at uh, justice again, because it's important when we're talking about um, eternal life and really just in the uh, Christian world, because we see that God loves justice. God loves justice. It says that in Isaiah 61. It, it says, For I, the Lord, love justice. It also says that in Psalm 37, 28. It says, For the Lord loves justice. It can't be any more simple. It can't be any more clear. God loves justice. And, and again, when, when we take a look at justice, justice is receiving what we deserve. That, that might uh, show off some warning signs to us because we learned that we deserve death. And God loves justice. God likes when, when people receive what they deserve, and we deserve death. That, that, that should send off warning signals to us. That's very troublesome, because God loves justice, and we deserve death. Not, not a great combination to have. But we'll go ahead this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can open up to uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, we're going to see what Paul has to say about this whole, right, or this whole justice and righteousness and faith. Um, deal in Romans chapter 3. And we're going to be reading verses 21 through 31. If you don't have your Bible, that's all right. Uh, the words are back there. Uh, two lovely ladies back there rocking it. Uh, very first time. Way to go, ladies. Um, so Romans chapter 3, again, we'll be reading verses 21 uh, through 31. And I'm just going to forewarn you guys, this, this is a very deep passage. I mean, this, this is stuff that, that is difficult to comprehend, difficult to understand, to fully comprehend, and to fully Understand. I mean, it's stuff that scholars and theologians spend hours and hours upon. And we're going to attempt to, to go through uh, this passage here in Romans chapter 3. If you haven't read Romans, I strongly encourage you to do so, as Romans kind of thought to be the sum of theology. And, and if you don't really know uh, a whole lot about this Christian faith, Romans is, is a good book uh, to start in, as it kind of sums up the faith that we have as Christians. It, it can be difficult to understand at times, but it does a great job in summarizing uh, the, the faith that we have as Christians. And so we'll read it all as one big chunk at first, and then we'll kind of break it down. And, and as we're reading that, verses 23 and 25 through 25 are kind of the verses that we're going to focus on. But here we go. It says, Paul writes in, in chapter 3, verse 21, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. The what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also. Since God is one, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised by faith? Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. 
And so again, I, I, I realize and understand that that's a lot to comprehend there. So we're going to kind of break it down a bit. And, and again, uh, focusing there on verses 23 uh, through 25. Um, but when reading, it's important to know the context of both before and after. But in verse 23, again, we took a look at this uh, verse uh, last week. And probably a, a verse that many of us are familiar with. It says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, again, we, we all have sin in our life. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We later learned that the wages of that sin, the payment, what we deserve from that sin is death. And so we all deserve death. And Romans 3.23 is a verse that a lot of people can quote. But unfortunately, most of those people who can quote Romans 3.23 can't quote Romans 3.24. Because in Romans 3.23 it says, for, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But in verse 24 it says, and Paul, Paul's not finished with this thought. You know, sometimes we interrupt people and we can totally misinterpret what they're saying or totally get a different Bible. Here, people kind of interrupt Paul or, or, or stop him short. Where it says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Paul continues and he says, and are justified by his grace as a gift to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So here we learn that, yes, all have sinned. But Paul continues, says, and are justified. Each and every one of us has sinned in our life. But at the same point, if, if we accept this faith, then we are also justified by his grace as a gift. We are all justified by God's grace. We're all justified. Justified, uh, again, a word that we, we're going to take a look at a lot of words that we use kind of in the church, um, but not a whole lot elsewhere, so the interpretation could kind of be lost. But justified, uh, kind of what that means is, is something to be declared righteous or, or declared or made right. And so here what, what Paul is saying that, yeah, all have said, but we're all also justified. Everybody, but, and we're going to see later the, the qualifications of this. But he says that people are also justified, they're made right in God's eyes by his grace. It's through God's grace that each and every one of us are justified by grace. Again, again this, this theme of grace coming up over and over and over again. Grace is, is such a major theme of the New Testament. We are justified. We are made right in the eyes of God because of his grace. And, and, and that's so beautiful that, that we all have sin in our life and we learn that, that the payment, the wages of that sin is death. And you know, that can be kind of a morbid thought. But at the same time, we are all justified in the eyes of God. We are all made righteous. We're all, we're all declared right. We're, we're made right. We're declared righteous in the eyes of God. Why? It's by God's grace that that is made possible. So it says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and are justified, were, were made right by God's grace as a gift to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So it's through Christ that we are justified by God's grace. And Paul continues in verse 25, and he says, Whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. So he says, uh, Paul here says that we, we all have sinned, but we're all justified by God's grace. And he says it's through Jesus that we're justified. And, and so how, and we may ask how, how through Jesus are we justified? And, and Paul talks about that. It's probably not, not much of a surprise to many of us. But God said, or Paul says in verse 25 that whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. So Jesus serves as a propitiation by his blood. And again, propitiation, um, a word that we really use in church. I'm not sure I've really ever heard someone use the word propitiation outside of a church setting or talking about theology or doctrines of, of some sort. A propitiation uh, is simply the act of gaining or regaining someone's favor. And there's also a sense, so, so you're gaining someone's favor. So we are gaining God's favor through Jesus. And we're talking about propitiation. There's also a sense of covering. Um, in the Septuagint, uh, which is uh, the Greek translation of the New Testament, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew, and the New Testament was originally written in Greek. In the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, 
uh, they, they use the Greek word propitiation to talk about the covering or the lid of the Ark of the Covenant. So we get this sense that propitiation is also talking about covering. And so here we see in, in Romans chapter 3 that, that uh, we, we, are all, we all have sin in our life and we later learn that the wages of that sin is death. Um, but we also see that we are justified. We are made right in the eyes of God. By what? By God's grace. And now how are, how are we justified by, by God's grace? Well, it's through Jesus Christ. And, and more specifically, it's through Christ's blood that he serves as our propitiation for our sins, that Jesus covers our sins. It's through the sacrifice that 2,000 years ago, nearly 2,000 years ago, when Jesus died and suffered on that cross, that death, that execution 2,000 years ago, covers our sin today. That's incredible. That's incredible to think about. That sacrifice 2,000 years ago covers all the sin that we commit today. That's awesome. That's awesome. There's no other story throughout all of, of, of mankind's history where there's a story like this. Christianity is truly one of a kind. And so it's through the sacrifice of Jesus that our sins are covered. They're, they're as Jesus is our propitiation for our sins. Jesus covers over our sins. You know, uh, like when, when you're going out to eat, um, to give you an example, you're going out to eat and you, you're enjoying your meal, you, you're hanging out uh, with your friends or your family, whoever it may be, and, and you're really enjoying that. You order your favorite steak and some meat and potatoes or whatever it may be, your favorite meal at your favorite restaurant, and you're enjoying it. And then it's time to pay. And you realize, oh, you know what? I forgot my wallet. I've been there, done that. Uh, but you still need to pay for your meal. And so if you have gracious friends or family with you, they'll say, I'll cover you. I'll cover you. I'll, I'll pay this meal for you. We, we kind of get the sense there. And in fact, uh, when, when I eat with my parents, I don't even bother to bring my wallet. Uh, it's like my, my parents will cover me. Thanks, Mom and Dad. They got me. They're covering me. In the same sense, Jesus covers over our sins. Jesus has paid the way. Jesus has paid the debt that we owe for our sins because we all, we all know that we all sin. We all know that we all deserve death. But we're all justified. We're all made right by God's grace through Jesus Christ who covers over our sins. I mean, this is awesome, guys. This is like some of the hearts of the gospel message. This is awesome. This passage that we're dissecting here in Romans. Again, if you haven't read Romans, I strongly encourage you. But again, Jesus paid our wages of death. For we all have sinned, the wages of sin is death. And we're all justified in the eyes of God. We're all made right. We're all, we're all declared righteous in the eyes of God by His grace through Jesus Christ who serves as the propitiation for our sins. In other words, Jesus paid the wages of our sin, which is death. <laughs> but again, Paul, Paul doesn't stop there. So, so again, we see that we all have sin. We see that the wages of that sin is death. We see that we're justified because it's important, because God loves justice. We're justified by God's grace through Jesus Christ. But Paul doesn't stop there yet either. He says, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. To be received by faith. You see, Jesus, he, he, he truly died 2,000 years ago. I mean, historical uh, studies prove that Jesus died and that he was somehow missing. People make uh, different conclusions. But it's a historical fact that Jesus was crucified, and Jesus truly did die on the cross for our sins, and he has covered over our sins, and that's part of the free gift of God. But Paul says that we receive, we receive that free gift of God by what? By faith. We receive it by faith. We receive this gospel message by faith. And faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. We receive that propitiation. We receive the payment for, for, for our sins by faith. Faith is the centerpiece of how we receive the free gift of God, eternal life. Because again, let me tell you, 
God has extended that free gift of eternal life to each and every single one of us here on earth. Throughout all of history of the human kind, God has, has extended that free gift of eternal life. But again, just like when we, when we receive uh, gifts during Christmas time, we have to make that decision to receive that free gift. And here Paul informs us that we receive this gift, we receive God's grace by faith. Faith is the centerpiece of how we receive eternal life. And Paul jumps down, if we jump down to verse 28, uh, Paul says, For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. For, so we are justified by faith. In other words, we are made right by our faith. Now, now Paul is kind of summarizing it here. He, he kind of skips a, a couple of steps. Um, as, as again, we, are, we aren't saved by our own doing. We aren't saved by our own faith. By, by no means would anybody's faith be good enough to save them. For the wages of sin is death. But through the grace of God, the gift of God, the free gift, everything we talked about last week, we have received, we've given the opportunity to receive that gift. And so the only thing that's on the line, the only thing that's on the line of whether or not we, we receive eternal life in the end is if we choose to receive it, if we choose to receive it by faith. And so if you do receive this message by faith, then long story short, you are justified by faith. Paul, Paul kind of makes the conclusion there as he kind of summarizes it there as the only thing that's on the line, because that gift has been already presented to you, the only thing on the line of whether or not you will, you will receive eternal life is if you receive it with faith. For you receive the free gift of God through faith. And again, this is, again, uh, some, some very uh, meat stuff. We're, we're talking about the, the meat uh, of the scriptures here. And so when we're talking about this idea of, of being justified and being declared righteous, Christianity is truly one of a kind. I mean, there, there's a lot of reasons that why Christianity is one of a kind, but Christianity is one of a kind when it comes to being justified as world. Because in the world... You know, we, we develop a sort of justification on our own doing. We, we do it all on ourselves. When, when we're talking about uh, well, the kids, when, when they're going to school uh, for the first 13 years of their life, getting ready for college, they're, they're taught that they need to get good grades so they can receive scholarships and other sorts for, to go to college. So they can receive these accepted letters to college or to get other jobs. I mean, we, we instill that in our kids at a young age. You've you, you got to earn it on yourself. You've got to work on it yourself. You've got to work hard so that you can be justified, so that, you, so that you can receive it, so that you can receive that job, so you can receive that college education. And in fact, it's the same way in the other religions of the world. You've got to work at it. If you work at it, and, you know, if you do more good than bad, then you're justified. But it's all on you. But that's where Christianity is truly one of a kind because we aren't justified by what we do, but we're justified by God's grace. <laughs> Thank goodness it's not on us. Thank goodness we have a perfect Savior, Jesus Christ, who, who paid it all. He paid it all 2,000 years ago. And through that, through the grace of God, we are justified. And we, we receive that justification through faith. Christianity truly one of a kind. It's incredible. It's incredible. that This message is incredible. It, 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 this message does, doesn't bring you joy and, and excitement in this world. I don't know what else will. Because Christianity is truly one of a kind. Because we are justified not by our own doing, but by the work of God. As God sent his own son. As a, a few minutes ago, we, we sang, How Great Thou Art. One of my favorite songs. We sang that in the hospice room. Um, just the day before uh, my grandpa passed away and, and always uh, bring, always gives me the chills. And, but, but there's the verse talking about how God didn't even spare his own son. That's incredible. That's incredible. We, we can't comprehend that, that God would not even spare his own son for us because God paid the price in sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. And through that, we are justified, not by our own doing, but by the work, the doing, the work that took place 2,000 years ago. And this message is incredible. 
And so, uh, as, again, as we use uh, this Christmas analogy, um, giving and receiving of gifts, uh, we've all been uh, given that free gift of eternal life. You know, when, when it's Christmas time and you give that gift to your kid, it's free to them. You know, you probably uh, put the, the presents under the tree or whatever it may be, whatever traditions you have. You give it to them on Christmas Day and it's free to them. Just like that, eternal life is free to us. It is a free gift to each and every one of us. But again, come Christmas morning, each and every kid is going to have to make the decision. They go, you know what? Do I want to accept this gift? Or do I say, no thanks, Mom and Dad, I don't want that. And each and every one of us, each, everybody has to make that decision come Christmas time. And let me tell you, each and every one of us has to make that decision now regarding eternal life. We only, we only have, this, we only have this, this one shot here on earth, and you need to receive it. And we receive it by faith. That is how we receive God's free gift of eternal life is by faith. And this, I, this idea of faith being crucial uh, is, is supported elsewhere as well. In Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 9 uh, through 13, Paul writes, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And we'll stop there. So here we see Paul writes that uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. There's this emphasis on believing and having faith in God and His Son Jesus Christ. And if we have that faith, if we have that belief in Christ, if we have that belief in God, then guess what? You will be saved. Because again, the only thing on the line is whether or not we choose to receive that gift. And we receive it by our belief, and we receive it by our faith in God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Just one more example, and in Acts chapter 16, and, and these are just a, a couple of examples. In fact, in our Sunday school class this morning, we went through, uh, we're going through the book of John, and we read through uh, John 5 and a bit of 6, and twice I, I saw it talking about, if you believe in Jesus, you will be saved. And so this stuff is all over, but I just uh, picked out two other examples uh, to use uh, this morning. But in Acts chapter 16, we'll start in verse 25. Here, uh, Paul and Silas are thrown in prison because of their belief in Jesus Christ. And so in verse 25, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas, and this is them in jail, were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison, prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the, jail, and the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So again, here, Paul and Silas thrown in prison. They're, they're singing hymns. They're praying to God. Probably a strange sight that that jailer probably wouldn't have seen much, as people probably wouldn't be singing hymns a whole lot in prison. But all of a sudden, there, there was a great earthquake. And uh, the, the jailer originally thought that everybody has left, and so he's about to kill himself, because that would have been his punishment regardless for letting all the, the prisoners escape. Um, but Paul and Silas, they call out to him, say, hey, we're here. And so the jailer realizes that this is a miracle, this is the work of God, and that, and that they serve the one and true only God. And so in verse 30, the jailer asked, then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Again, we see it, it, it's about that belief. It's, it's about that faith in God and in his son, Jesus Christ, that saves us. Well, that, that's not what saves us. We're saved by the grace of God. I want to be careful uh, with how we, we talk about this. Um, but that's the only thing that's on the line for us to receive eternal life. So if we have that belief, if we have that faith, then guess what? You will be saved. It's 100% true. It's a fact. If you have faith, if you have a living and active faith, which we'll talk about next week, what a living and active faith looks like, then you will be saved. 
Faith is so important when talking about how we are saved as Christians. That is the process of how we receive God's free gift of eternal life. And again, this is uh, deep and, and it may be confusing uh, for a lot of us. And that's all right, because it is that first. Because this is, this is the meat of the scriptures. This is some of the meat of, of the good news. But I, however, I hope this... Uh, makes you begin to start to think about this process and the important question of how are we saved. And, and I hope that you can see through Scripture because I hope you guys understand that the only authority that we have is through God's Word. This is the authority. I don't have authority because I'm a preacher. I don't have authority because I'm part of the Church of God, the General Conference. No, our authority comes through the Scriptures. And I hope that you guys can see that, that I'm making these points not on my own ideas or thinking, but through God's Word, His Holy Word. And I hope that you can see through God's Word that it's through God's grace that we are saved. And we receive that grace by faith. It's not our own doing, but we receive it by faith because of God's Grace, for we are we are about to receive something that we surely do not deserve. And if you have a living and active faith, Paul says it. The other writers of the New Testament say you will be saved. You will partake in God's coming kingdom for all of eternity, where everything wrong with this world will be made right. But you have to put your trust in God and the Son Jesus Christ. You have to have faith. In God and Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, there's so much reason to believe in God. I think that if, that if a person were to openly and honestly look at the question of whether or not God exists, I believe, if they're honest with themselves, that every single time they'll come away with the conclusion that God is real, God is alive and well, and that we can point to Jesus and the resurrection. I think if they, they earnestly seek it out with all their heart, with an open mind, an open heart, that they will come away with that conclusion because God wants to be known. God will make it possible if people are truly seeking them out. That's why I love stories uh, like Least Trouble. Um, has anybody read uh, the book, The Case for Christ? Some of us may have uh, read that. Least Trouble, author of that book. Well, Least Trouble was an avid atheist. And uh, he, he did not want to believe in God. He didn't believe in God. And he was very adamant about it. That there is no God. That we're all just created by chance. Well, long story short, uh, he, he, went to, he went to study. He went to study if God was real or not. And so he spent a lot of time uh, looking it out. And he was trying to prove uh, that God wasn't real. But in trying to prove that God wasn't real, he came with the conclusion that God is real. That God sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. It's so I think if someone openly and honestly search it out, that they will come away with our faith. On the other hand, there, there are also some barriers to accepting our faith. There, there's, there's three main barriers that can prevent people from, from accepting our faith. One being intellectual reasons. You know, what about other religions? What, what about the, the issue of evil and, and other uh, problems that you may think about? That may be a barrier to some people accepting our faith. Number two, you can have interior or personal reasons. You know, you could be last, you could be lacking a personal experience with God. You could go through a trauma in life and, and not feel like God is there with you. <clears throat> and third, common a barrier is a social reason. You, people may have trouble finding a good group of Christians. And I imagine that all of us have at least experienced one or two or maybe even all three of these barriers. And that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> that is completely all right to experience the, these barriers. Because a faith without some doubts is like a human body without any antibodies in it. People who blindly go on uh, believing and having this faith without uh, really uh, considering the doubts and the questions we can have, when a tragedy strikes or, or when a smart atheist comes their way and asks them an intriguing question, their faith is not going to be strong. It's good to wrestle with the questions and the doubts that we have. Because I think if you wrestle and question with those doubts that we have, the questions that we have, if you truly seek it out, if you truly seek for the answers, I think your faith will be all the more strong. So it's okay to have those questions. It's okay to have those doubts in our faith. But it's not okay to have those questions and doubts and not seek the answers to them. 
Be diligent in your studies. Be diligent in your pursuit of God. For it's by that faith, it's by that belief in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, that we will be saved. Because let me tell you today that I know 100% fact that if you believe in God, if you have a living and active faith in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, then you will be saved. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for the free gift of eternal life that you presented to each and every single one of us. Father, I just thank you for uh, the, the sacrifice that, that you paid uh, and, and your son, Jesus, paid so that it was possible for us to receive this free gift of eternal life. Father, I pray this morning that everybody here in this church, everybody listening here online, can receive your free gift by their faith, by, by their living and active faith in you. And Father, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for the many wonderful members here and the positive examples of the faith that they have in you. And Father, I just pray that day in and day out that our faith in you may continue to grow so that we can receive your free gift of eternal life. And Father, we look forward to that day. We pray that day may come soon. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. He calls us out unto deep waters act on faith. We haven't done this song in a while, but if you'd stand and sing with me, we'll close our service with emotions. <coughs>
long served and that the good God has given you that free gift of eternal life. And it's just up to us to receive that free gift of eternal life. And what's all on the line is your faith in God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And so I pray that you may have a firm foundation in your faith in God. And if you have questions or doubts with, with your faith, Please, please come talk to me or one of the other elders, one of the other uh, great leaders at our church. And so we can talk with you, work with you about the faith that we have in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, because it is so important. Everything is on the line regarding our faith in God. Thank you. Come back next week as we continue.